Hey guys, I'm Dr. T, and on this episode, I'm going to be talking about sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, previously known as STDs, sexually transmitted diseases, but we actually know they're more of infections rather than diseases, so we switched the name up on you. Why do we care about STIs? A couple of reasons. First of all, symptoms. So not everybody has symptoms, but when you do, they can be bad. Uh, and I'll talk about those in a minute. The other reason that we care about STIs is because they actually, if the infection sits around long enough, it can impact some of your reproductive organs or the parts of your body that help you make a baby and mess with your ability to have a baby in the future. They can scar things up and make it really difficult. So we like to treat STIs when we can. Let's first talk about the different types of STIs. There are quite a few, but the basic ones that are going to impact teenagers are going to be, number one, gonorrhea and chlamydia. So both of those are bacterias, and they kind of run together, so it's possible to get both at the same time, which is a bummer. Uh, but they're both treatable with antibiotics, so that's the plus. Gonorrhea and chlamydia, again, may not cause any symptoms at all. But if you do have symptoms, uh, if you have a vagina, that is usually going to be something like a funny change in your vaginal discharge, either a funny smell or a different color. It'll probably itch down there or burn when you pee. And if you have a penis, gonorrhea and chlamydia can cause pain with peeing and a funny discharge or, again, no symptoms at all. Another type of STI that a lot of teens deal with is trichomonas. And that's actually a parasite that uh, infects the genitals. Trichomonas has similar symptoms, um, but most commonly uh, it's going to be a funny discharge. Another one that is definitely worth talking about is HPV, which causes genital warts, as well as cervical cancer and cancer of the mouth. So we know that there is an HPV vaccine, and I'll talk about that in a different episode. But what you need to know about HPV is that if you catch it, it's a virus, and so there is no treatment for it. So if you get genital warts, um, usually what you have to do is kind of, you can get them frozen off like you do for other warts, um, but there's no way to totally get rid of it. Sometimes the body kicks it out on its own, but uh, it's possible that warts pop up again. Another type of STI, herpes. Herpes is a virus and it presents as little painful pustules in the genital region. Now, because it's a virus, it's pretty difficult to treat. And so you can't actually get rid of herpes entirely. But if you do catch herpes, you can take a medicine that either prevents flare-ups or that suppresses and helps heal when you do have a flare-up. So you can either take a medicine every day or just when you need it. And then other important ones to know about, and those are HIV and syphilis. Especially syphilis, the prevalence is going to vary in different parts of the world, in different parts of the country. Uh, but the syphilis is treatable, HIV is manageable with medications. So I talked about the different types of STIs that are going to be a big deal for teenagers, as well as some of the symptoms that come with those. Um, now, the reason that we care about treating STIs is going to be, again, fertility, or the ability to have a baby in the future. That is why it is so important to get checked if you have symptoms and to treat the STI even if you don't have symptoms, because it can be causing damage on your insides. So how often do you get checked if you don't necessarily have symptoms? Great question. It is recommended for teenagers to get checked every year once you're sexually active and more frequently if you have symptoms. The reason is that this is a little bit different from adults because teenagers are especially susceptible to STIs, meaning there are specific cells in our bodies that grab on to these infections easier than an adult. And that's why we recommend checking more often because 
you are more susceptible and the consequences are bigger when you have it when you're younger. So remember to get checked every year once you're sexually active. Now, don't be scared of the checkup. Usually, in the United States, these visits are going to be confidential, meaning that your parents don't necessarily have to know, although it's always great to be honest and open with your parents. But when you go in for the testing, for those with a vagina, the way that test is performed is they give you basically like a Q-tip that you, yourself, put into your vagina, swirl around, and then put into the specimen cup. And that's all you usually have to do. Sometimes they'll take a pee sample too. Uh, for those with a penis, you pee in a cup. And that's it. So don't be scared of the STI check, all right? It's something that comes with having sex and being a responsible partner, knowing your status and getting checked. And knowing also that for the majority of STIs, there's going to be a treatment and it's pretty easy. One other thing is that if you do go in for your STI checks, HIV and syphilis are going to be a blood test. The good news is it is usually only a one-time deal. Once you start having sex, they'll check your HIV and syphilis in blood work, and then you're usually good to go, unless you have concerning findings later on. So get checked, be safe, use barrier protection, condoms, male and female condoms, or a dental dam. Have fun.